Now, people in Henbury, uh, as we've been reporting this morning, uh, in that particular part of Bristol, say they feel terrorised by some of the young people who live there. It comes after a bus driver was shot with a nail gun while driving through Crow Lane. Police stepped up patrols through Henbury at the weekend and are reviewing CCTV footage from the area. Local people say this is the tip of the iceberg. I'd never come down here at night. Of course, with me, I was here in the 30s. I know what, when this was this... Um, a lane, like you know, we didn't see no traffic, no kids, no nothing. So it's changed a lot since then. You wouldn't believe what it's changed. No, no estates, no houses. Or oh, now, it's, you feel intimidated. You just don't feel safe. It's awful. I've lived in this area for f- 53 years. I've lived in just along the road, and it used to be a lovely, peaceful place. And now I'm nervous to come down here. I used to walk all across the fields with my dog. I wouldn't go down there now. It, you know, you're just too nervous to come out. What sort of things are you seeing down here, then? Well, you, you see all sorts of things. I mean, there last Sunday there were youngsters throwing cans at a young man who was very decent and nice waiting for the bus. And he was slightly disabled and they had bike they were running riding round and round him throwing cans at him and i mean that's the sort of thing that goes on and it's dreadful throwing stones at buses and they've also been causing a lot of trouble up through here and my wife will not come out after five o'clock in the evening she's terrified so it's really really ridiculous it's threatening behavior if you don't Give me some money, you won't pass. I mean, I've had that on the bridge myself. They've had, a, you know, the tape. They've had that across. And they said, if you don't pay us, you don't go through. Well, when the police were here for four weeks, I mean, you didn't see a sign of all these jobs. But, of course, as soon as the police go, they're back again. Mm, uh, powerful stuff. Well, uh, listening to that with me is Charlotte Leslie, who is the Conservative Perspective parliamentary candidate for the area and who organised a meeting between the police, community activists and young people of Henbury earlier this year. I mean, you know the area very, very well. Does that paint a picture for you, what you've just heard there? Morning, Stephen. Sadly, it does paint a picture, and I don't know how long your reporter was out for, but you don't have to be out for very long Mm. and speak to very many people to find exactly the same kind of stories, and worse, on every doorstep. It really is a big problem. stories are horrendous, aren't they? I mean, the intimidation, you don't pass this bridge or whatever unless you pay some money. That's that's outrageous. It is outrageous, and it's not only the intimidation that people feel, but it's very much the helplessness. Mm. They feel prisoners in their own houses a lot of the time, and often they feel prisoners in their own community and they often feel absolutely powerless to do anything about it and it's that sense of powerlessness which led me to hold a public meeting earlier in the year to give people the opportunity to articulate with the media and with police present the kind of thing they have to face on a daily basis. Now your website you say you know as part of your campaign action not words it's all very well having meetings and everybody saying yeah the police should be doing more there should be more patrols and all this but what needs to be done to stop this now and knock this on the head this is this is a suburb of of, of a major city it shouldn't be allowed to happen absolutely action not words and even words like this on the radio aren't actually going to change things out there now one thing you have to understand is that it's not going to happen overnight if i was to sit here and promise you a solution overnight you'd know there'd be something wrong but there's really two aspects there's the local aspect and the national aspect and we can work at the moment on the local aspect and that's twofold firstly pushing for a greater police presence after the meeting i held the police were there in greater numbers and that has worked so it's a question of pushing and pushing the police are very stretched and they spend a lot of their time doing paperwork when they should be on the street yeah, i was going to come to that actually and yeah i mean th- th- is th- that should be disappearing a-, a little bit i mean you know both sides of the house are saying the same thing but i'm often wondering what the police are actually doing uh, because if we're talking about road crime if we're talking about you know people taking cars burglary trouble in the streets it's because the police are stretched. What are they stretched doing? Surely they can deal with a bunch of kids who are intimidating adults going about their daily business, can't they? Well, they're very tied up. I've been out with the police, and things amazed me. I went out with them in the centre of town from 11 at night until 3 in the morning. I was exhausted by the end of it. I said to the police, you know, this must be where you knock off, have a cup of cocoa and go home. They said, no way. <laughs> they said, we're going yeah. to be here for the next, um, next five hours doing paperwork on mm. what just happened. Yeah. And it's accountability is one thing, but st- mindless paperwork 
paperwork that takes police away from where they need to be is very damaging, and I think Crow Lane is one of the victims of that culture. What, what about the symptoms, never mind the results of all this? What can be done to... Is it parenting? I mean, is it these kids aren't brought up? What, what's going on? It's so many things, and the reasons run very, very deep. I mean, a lot of it is family. Parents don't impose the discipline they should because perhaps they haven't been brought up in the disciplined environment themselves. Mm. I'm a member of something called the Family Commission, chaired by Esther Ranson, and we're looking at all sorts of reasons, and they run very deep. But on a more optimistic note, there are things you can do. Bristol Broad Plain Boys Club in Bristol does fantastic work with kids who are at risk of falling out, going onto the wrong track in life. And I'm working with local boxing clubs to try and get something similar going on in Henbury. I've been speaking to Bristol Rovers. They're willing to help. I've even been yeah. up to speak to Radio 1 because a lot of those kids have an awful lot of talent. And don't forget, it's only a minority of kids who are really, really causing the problem. But that's, that's what's so annoying, isn't it? You say it's only a minority, so it should be quite easily knocked on the head, sure. It, it should, should be. be, but they're a very, very difficult minority. And the really sad thing is, is I've set up a group with young people in Henbury, and we're trying to tackle it. They're giving ideas of what we can do, and they say they're as scared as many of the adults have spoken, spoken to. to. Have you actually had a chance to speak to any of the kids themselves who are actually causing the trouble? Have you? What, what do they say? What, what's their raison d'etre for all this? I've not managed to speak to the troublemakers but I've spoken to a couple of those who are on the fringe of the troublemakers. They say there's absolutely no deterrent. I'm afraid yeah. they say that they laugh at Asbos. They also say that they feel that once they've done some, one thing wrong, as Sue Porter was saying from the Princess Trust earlier, hope's gone. Mm. They may as well embark on a life of crime because they're not going to get a job anyway. And particularly in this recession climate, it's really very serious yeah. indeed. What's, what's the latest thing, the, the voodoo or the voohoo or whatever, <laughs> the Asbo thing? <laughs> we just get a list of these things, don't we? As, we, they, we they, they do nothing. We really, don't so. need more acronyms. What we actually need <laughs> is stuff out there and stuff that kids really engage with. That's why I'm a huge fan of boxing. It's edgy, it feels a bit underground, but actually it's the best place to impose discipline and also a sense for these kids yeah, that delighted. they can actually do something. Delighted women's boxing is now an Olympic sport. I am delighted. Well, I wish it was there earlier when I used to box. A, that is a surprise, Charlotte. It really <laughs> I'm is. embarking on a different career had but, that uh, been the case. <laughs> well, goodness, we, we've unearthed it this morning. Um, a final thought. I mean, you heard some people at the end of their tether on that report. What, is you, what, what, what do you say to those people, uh, you know, as to how they can look forward to the, 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 the future, be it days, weeks or months? Well, I think the first thing is not to dismiss it, not to say, oh no no it's all right the statistics say everything's fine because everything is not fine mm. listen to what's going on listen to what they're saying and then try to come back and say look these are the things we're doing people don't expect an answer overnight but they do expect to be listened to and taken seriously all right thanks very much indeed for coming in good to talk to you thank you uh,